Welcome back to Jedi Enclave. I am Daniel. I'm Chris. And uh, this is your weekly uh, Jedi Enclave Presents. The, now, this is podcasting podcast, a uh, podcast where we talk about Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars the, and Star Wars accessories. Yes, yeah, Star Wars and other nerd stuff that we appreciate, like, or want to laugh at. Oh, there's a lot of Rebel Moon. other <clears throat> nerd shit today. Oh, I know. Yeah. That, so t- <laughs> this is our last our last show of 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're feeling retrospective. Yes. Um, as we do around this time of year. And we're going to be going through. Uh, we, you and I saw a ton of. I feel like every two weeks this summer we were, we were going to Pretty see much, a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just so much nerd shit. Yeah. And we're going to go back and, and re- revisit that nerd yeah. shit. A uh, couple of uh, streaming shows that came out that were in in the nerd category as well um and then we're gonna talk about marvel what if season two a little bit i, I finished the last ep- uh, episode earlier today um there's some uh like some funny star wars theory news we got to talk about just because it kind of it kind of uh, made me laugh and it was really funny is any anytime we put out a star wars theory video which is r- very rarely it's like once every several months um, there's always comments about like, oh, all you want to do is is try to write in on the coattails of you know people. And it's like you do understand that 99.98 percent of our content has nothing to do with Star Wars theory because that's how little space he occupies in my brain. Mm-hmm. Unless he says something fucking stupid, and then I gotta laugh at him for a week. Oh no, I'm really looking forward to it. And also, if he does something cool, we'll talk about that too. It's just that he never has. Never does. Yeah. We reading off of a Wikipedia entry and making it into a video is not Star Wars content. Um. Anyway. Um. Yeah. I just told you what we're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Oh, time codes in the description. If you're uh, if you're here watching, uh, our our official podcast. Um. And you don't. You just want to go toward a uh, toward a particular part of, of the discussion today. Go check out the time codes. And if you're watching live, you get nothing. Yeah. You lose good day. Sir. Yeah, you must experience it as it's happening. As with all other tem- temporal beings, I'm mm-hmm. very sorry. You learn to time travel if you don't. You know, if you don't want to do that. Uh, and once you learn how to time travel, please teach us because yes. I I know I personally would like to learn. Yes, that way um, I could go back, write the Harry Potter series publish it under my name and then we wouldn't have to worry about harry potter being from a piece of human trash yeah that'd be nice yeah whoa that came out of nowhere (laughs) (laughs) uh make sure you click like and uh subscribe and uh share the the live stream and the uh, podcast where you think it'll be appreciated or if you're especially cruel somewhere you don't think it'll be appreciated Mm -hmm. um and join us on discord we have a broadcast channel on facebook now I don't know what it is. I don't know what that does. Po- Facebook is like, do you want to start a broadcast channel? I was like, uh, okay, it, sure. I, guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> is it going to kill me? <laughs> and I have no idea what it's for. It, um, m- it might kill you. I've posted a couple things in it. It might be the Futurama suicide booth. It's Well, I'm still alive. Okay. I think. Well, that's a plus. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what it's for, but we have one and I posted a couple of things in it. Um, Battlefront 2 after this mm-hmm. uh, with our boys from Gremlin Squad. And then I think not tomorrow. We're not doing Gungans and Dragons tomorrow, but we will be back with that uh, next week the, uh, on next Sunday. So you can join us for that. Uh, this is a live show, by the way. So um, if you want to pop in and say, hey, I'll try to answer it when it makes sense, because uh, we do cut some of these for YouTube and it wouldn't make sense if we're just mm-hmm. like talking to people out of nowhere. Uh, Nate says New Year's Eve on pinball today no actually a little inside joke um when we do our live shows there we must put a video game in Mm -hmm. or it won't let us go live yeah and so as a joke i always pick star wars vr pinball pinball okay yeah um but hey nate thanks for stopping by and saying hi uh all right so okay let's talk about star wars series real quick we'll we'll get this out of the way uh (laughs) so Star Wars theory considers himself... Hold on. Let me preface this. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of Star Wars, people have been making fan films and fan stories for all of time. It's Mm -hmm. it's just... It's one of those things that is just kind of baked into the Star Wars fandom, right? And most of it's... Even the stuff that isn't great, people are so moved by the story that they they want to be a part of it. Yeah. Right? They're they're passionate. Right. And um, the Star Wars series the same way it, he he did a, a Vader fan film and mm-hmm. um and we're, we're not even gonna argue about the quality but it, it doesn't care like like I don't I don't it care. exists yeah it, it exists if you like it that's fine if you don't that's fine um so he's apparently working on another project mm-hmm. uh, something to do with Heir to the Empire because um Star Wars series really fetishizes 
Star Wars Legends, right? As if half of it isn't total trash. Now, like, Heir of the Empire isn't trash, obviously. The, the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure Timothy Zahn does not know Star Wars theory exists. Oh, yeah, probably not. Um, I can tell you a couple people who do, though. <laughs> So, okay. So anyway, he's doing another project, something to do with Heir to the Empire. Okay. He posted on Twitter about it and posted an image of a hologram Luke Skywalker that was apparently uh, AI generated with Mark Hamill's likeness. So he's making the same mistake Disney did and not recasting Luke Skywalker. No, there he's making a, a much more dangerous mistake, which is that he thinks that it's all right to use the likeness of one of the most famous actors planet earth has ever seen without his permission. Hmm. And a few people noticed and they weighed in mm -hmm. and they said, and someone tagged Mark Hamill and it's like, Hey, did uh, star Wars theory ask you for permission to use your likeness? Uh, one word reply from Mark Hamill. No. <laughs> okay. Now thus started a thing, mm -hmm. right? B because there, there could be lawyers involved. Uh, there, there might already be lawyers involved. I'm pretty involved. sure there already are. So the first thing is, weirdly, I wouldn't be surprised if Mark Hamill doesn't own his likeness as, uh, as Luke Skywalker. Hmm. Is it like in digital form? Yeah. I would bet Disney might. <laughs> Which would... Which, things that, would get way, way yeah. worse. And that's like, that's an entire shitty thing, by the way. Yeah. Um, because it, the, it's part of the actor's strike. Mm -hmm. that that we saw a few months ago was them just owning people's likenesses and shit and, and being able to do whatever with it that they want um so it, it, like he made a uh, star wars series like oh well you know i don't make any money off of these and blah 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 and it's like that 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 doesn't matter that that doesn't make it morally correct and it also doesn't matter for the purposes of the law legally does not matter you can make you can make negative dollars and you can still get fucking sued for it and you would lose immediately mm -hmm. because you a don't own star wars despite what you might think mm -hmm. you don't own luke skywalker as a character and you don't as far as i am aware own mark hamill's face <laughs> so there it's now someone uh, uh like uh a while later after that tagged mark hamill again and said hey are you mad at star wars theory another one word reply no okay which is not him giving permission no right um but as soon as he was tagged in this, and as soon as someone somewhere saw it, and then lawyers were called, I guarantee it. I wouldn't be surprised if he's already gotten a cease and desist letter over it, um, especially since he's he's like a, you know highly visible and everything. Um, and I guarantee you, this is probably going to uh, lead to a bunch of crying videos about the woke deep state and how you know they they're doing to him what they did to gina carano and C all this other bullshit it isn't star wars theory the guy who's crying about how disney doesn't invite him to things yes okay yeah he's the guy that really wants to either be uh andrew tate or wants to be fucked by Andrew Tate. I can't tell. Because I'm pretty sure that this whole episode is just going to get him extra disinvited to everything. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. like yeah. actually on the blacklist yeah. of things. Like, if he tries to buy tickets to Star Wars Celebration, they'll just say no. Yeah, you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not. You're not, you're not allowed within. We don't want radius. you here. Yeah, we have a restraining order. Yeah. This is the thing though is that his like victim complex that would that would be his birthday. Like that that would be like a birthday gift. Him, him having that level of like oppression or whatever, because then he'd get to go make videos about it. Yeah, probably. So to put in a nice little period on this whole drama, um, <laughs> the most surprising face weighed in on this issue. Same thread, William Shatner. <laughs> William Shatner went to the comments and said, I don't like you either. <laughs> First off, what a complete non sequitur. Yeah. Like, I, I think he's, I think the, he's quoting... the, the perfect constellation of Star Wars and Star Trek fandom yeah. at this intersection of internet stupidity. Just William Shatner dunking on a dude. Yeah. No, look, <laughs> William Shatner doesn't know who Star Wars Siri is. I guarantee it. Probably he, he not. He just no. doesn't. And I think he's probably uh, quoting the line from episode four yeah well i don't like you either or whatever <laughs> he doesn't like you i don't like you either that's probably what he was doing almost certainly now however it's funny as fuck <laughs> and in my mind i like to see like i like to imagine william shatner being like fuck that guy <laughs> <laughs> it's just being the good the best thing ever 
So there, yeah. there's your Star Wars theory drama for the week. Uh, we'll go on to not caring about him until and, he does and, something else stupid. And it has been such a dull time that that actually counts for your Star Wars news. Yeah, so, oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, and there are actually there are other Star Wars things we don't have time to talk about today. Um, uh, there's like a video game thing, and there, there, uh, okay. Adam Driver said he's not returning to Star Wars ever. Hmm. Um, okay. So that like they're never ever going to get back together again. Okay. Well, Taylor Swift. Yeah. I think. I, I think. I think that's Taylor. If Swift. anyone can explain to me who Taylor Swift is. <laughs> If there are any Swifties in the comments, yeah. please. I'm sorry. I'm a very tell us what terrible people we are for not knowing I'm, her entire body. Not only am I a terrible person, I'm a, also apparently a terrible gay mm-hmm. for not knowing who Taylor Swift is. So that's right. All right. So um, okay, but what if you did know about Taylor oh, Swift? Do you see what I did see, there? Yeah, that's wow. What a great fucking yeah. springboard. Yeah, get out. <laughs> um, so Christmas season abound. Uh, mm-hmm. Marvel. Uh, they dropped their what if series season two it gave a, a nine days of christmas yes roughly uh, and the whole thing was a blast it, it was yeah. a lot of fun um there were a number of episodes i'm being <laughs> so, so we talked about the first two the, the last time because right. that was the only two that yeah, were what, what if what if marvel did a blade runner mm-hmm. what if what, what, what if star lord actually got to his dad in the first place right um, and then vamp for like six seconds. Okay. So uh, the, the, there were three more and or not seven, seven more. And uh, everyone was, was super excited for the Die Hard one. For, for, understandably, because Die Hard is objectively the best Christmas movie. Um, That's incorrect. Oh, right. You're going to argue with me because that one Batman movie. Batman Returns is the yeah. best Christmas movie ever. And fuck you for not thinking so. <laughs> Um, so that was the third. That was the third one. Yep. Which I thought was Marvel a does a die hard. Yep. My notes say Happy Hulkin saves the day. Yeah. It turns out fucking Happy Hogan Get, gets some Hulk yeah. juice shot in his veins and beats the shit out of right. Justin Hammer, uh, who has yeah. got to be the most forgettable MCU villain. Uh, really? I love him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in uh, in Iron, he's the villain from Iron Man Two. Mm-hmm. He's a rival um, arms dealer. Yeah. Who is uh, played by Sam? Um, fuck, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Sam something. Okay. Um, who is I find personally fucking hilarious, <laughs> and my favorite part of Iron Man Two, which is to me kind of a forgettable movie, is when he goes to the Stark Expo and they introduce him to picking up the pieces that Jed that thing yeah and he does this goofy little dance yeah. it's my favorite part of the whole movie and he does the dance in the episode too where he does the little the little dance and mm-hmm. shit it is the funniest shit and just them doing a die hard was enough for me to be on board yeah. um what if iron man crashed into the grand master which i thought was another cool one it's kind it, of it, it's kind of mad max ish kind yeah, of it's marvel it, what, what if marvel did mad max yeah and, and uh Tony had pissed off Gamora and she was off trying to kill him. And, and my, my notes also say maximum Jeff Goldblum. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that Jeff Goldblum is at the point in his career where every time he plays a character, he's actually just playing himself. I, I don't think he had a script. <laughs> he might not have I think actually that, that he was just making shit up and like, like they might have just given him some notes like this is they could have done this the, is the character uh, the, you the need the to mention thing. like th- yes. this this is what's happening in the yeah. scene right, right, make right, it right. up yes. they might have actually given him a script and he just said that's bullshit i'm just gonna make yeah. it up uh he's and the fact that he was there himself to do it was really classic yeah. which by the way another thing worth noting in this um a lot of the original actors came back to do uh I their believe characters. it's everyone except the people they don't have under contract anymore yeah. so like uh anytime steve rogers shows up right. that's another person anytime tony stark shows mm-hmm. up anytime uh Black Widow shows up, which you know they would not get Scarlett Johansson back. Yeah, yeah, like, there was, like, there was a lot of th- if they asked her, she would have laughed yeah. them out of the room. Um, but like, yeah, you got your Kate, uh, Kate Blanchett's mm-hmm. as uh, Hella, yeah. who, by the way, I don't know how she's not just an enormous gay icon at this point <laughs> because she is such a fucking queen yeah, all of the time. Uh, but it was cool to, to hear some of those like really familiar voices, and, and they have a car race, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? This is probably my oh, yeah. probably my least favorite one, and not because it was bad. I just it was, it was fine. I just it, it was just like this is just I don't care about this. It, it, yeah, C- Captain Peggy is is just not the most exciting character, I guess. There were a lot of it, it was more or less uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, pretty much. Yeah, but instead of Bucky, you have Steve Rogers Steve in and, in the robot, right? And and they think he's good. 
like you think Peggy knocks not, some sense into yeah. him, but he's extra brainwashed. Oh and, yeah, and then uh, fucking Black Widow's mom shows up mm-hmm. that we remember from uh, Black Widow the movie. Yep. Um, then at the very end, Captain Peggy gets kidnapped through time. Yes, and and we get that one shot of like the Scarlet Witch and Thor and uh, Nick Fury. Yes. And they're all talking like ye old English. Right. That's it. Cut to black. Which is going to come back later. Yes. So what if Kahori reshaped the world? This was my favorite episode. My favorite as well. And um, Uh, Okay, I have to ask. Did you see the version with all English voices or did you see the one with them speaking like Mohawk in Spanish? It was not English. Okay, good. So it was the original language with mm-hmm. uh, there were subtitles because yeah. I watch everything with subtitles. Obviously. But, um, yeah, it was that was great. A lot of attention to detail mm-hmm. paid there. There was a moment in that episode where the music hit me really hard and like I got emotional. And it's mm-hmm. um, well, it's when everyone shows up to fight at the end. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, this is more or less Marvel. What, what if Marvel did a Pocahontas? Pocahontas or Avatar, which is saying Pocahontas yeah. again. Um, and there's there's that moment where they're all getting ready to load up on the boats mm-hmm. and like they see like the blue eyes and the mm-hmm. force and shit. And Corey comes out and just kicks the shit out of all of them. The music there was fucking amazing. It was so, so good. Uh, but yeah, my, my favorite one probably out of the mm-hmm. series. I, I absolutely loved at the end when she and, and all her her tribe fellows showed up in Il- Isabel's court and basically told her to eat shit. Yeah. And you know what? They try to be real polite at first. Yeah. They're they, like, hey, you know, why don't you just stay on your side of the ocean? We'll stay on ours and, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll be okay. What if just for a moment you guys aren't crazy fucking Europeans? And Isabella's like, sorry, I own the entire world. And Kahori's like, sorry, your throne is now toothpicks. Y- yeah. Right. Yeah. Fucking great. I love the message of it. I loved all of it. And um, j- another thing that is going to come back later, uh, Strange Supreme shows up. It's like, hey, Gahori, you're pretty cool. Why, why, why don't you do? You, why don't you step into my office? Yeah. Do you like my collar? First of all, but yeah, that was that made sense later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what if Hella found the Ten Rings, which also was one I liked quite this a bit. Was, I, I thought I was kind of mad on it. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Like I, it, it was visually cool. Yeah. Uh, Kate Blanchett, I love her. Killed it. Yeah. Um, it, I'm, I'm just not super interested in Hella. I guess I or, or I am the now. Ten Rings guy. Uh, so weirdly and you know how everyone has a type sure right? yeah I, I try not to be too restrictive mm-hmm. it's it, it's more the person than anything else i generally don't go after 50 year old actors okay uh the dude that plays mr ten rings mm-hmm. could fucking get it in the, okay. in the movie in sang i mean which is the character he's, he's playing sure, yeah. in the and i'm not sure i can't remember if that was the actor that did the voice it might have been i I assume so, just because yeah. they got so many of the other original actors to do the voices. But I'm just know. saying he could do a lot to me with rings and I'd be OK with it. OK. Um, however, like I said earlier, I'm not really sure how uh, Hela hasn't become a gay icon because <laughs> she's got the, the fucking extra headgear mm-hmm. and she's so fucking witty and and bitchy. And I love her. And it's it's cool that they do the at the end, they do the um the, like the good Hella with the white. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of the Star Wars Infinities comic with the white Vader. And shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, also another cool thing about that is you get to see Odin be kind of a badass. Yeah. And he's got his fucking spear. Yeah, and this shit. is not old old busted you know washed up odin this is odin like more or less in his prime to take over the whole everything yeah um what if the avengers assembled in 1602 ah yes where captain peggy does a robin hood yes uh this one was pretty cool too Mm -hmm. Uh, there are some things in this part in this episode that did not make sense to me yes but this episode was about the spectacle yeah i get it. like it was about they had all these cool voice actors they had all these cool characters that it was all just to set up that big fight at the end and it was great i get it i I totally get it and it it, like the thing i just remember thinking okay i totally get this like there's lots of lots of magic Mm -hmm. it's goofy it's quippy right how does ant-man get little who cares he has to have pimp particles okay who cares? I, I do a little bit. I would, <laughs> I would like to know, like, and he has a little Ant-Man suit. I mean, Tony Stark is in Victorian, Eng- or not even Victorian, Elizabethan England, and is able to build a gauntlet that can fucking send but, people through time. But, but that but that is even like, it's like the episode of Rick and Morty this season where he goes to Valhalla mm-hmm. and makes all of his technology stuff just out of like post-Bronze Age shit. 
he's like kind of Tony like, Stark built this in a cave with scraps. Yeah, and so like and his and it, the machine looked kind of weird and like yeah. like maybe it will work and maybe it won't. Uh Ant Man just has his Ant Man suit. Okay. And pin particles, I presume. Who cares? Yeah, I guess. Um so uh, that the, was cool. The, the moral of the story, of course, is that Captain Peggy never gets a happy ending. Yeah. That's too bad. Anyway, um, moving on. What if Strange Supreme intervened, which I thought also was a great fucking episode. <laughs> my, Probably my, my se- second favorite. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. My, my note here is Strange Supreme is a bad guy? Who could have possibly imagined? Yeah, this dude, <laughs> he's got one he's got one act, mm-hmm. right? He is Oh my god, I need to save Christy. He can sing one note and mm-hmm. that's fucking it. And it's fine. Like it's his obsession. Yeah. So it, it like kind of makes sense. Um the it was like seeing uh, Captain Carter with the fucking Infinity Stones was cool. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, they're like, uh, let's put everything into one. And she's got the, she's got all the weapons, like fucking the, the Hela's head thing. The, 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 Odin's spear, Thor's hammer. Right. Uh, Kahori's holding the fucking the uh, ten rings Molnir. And, yeah. yeah it's, the, like, it's just like it was like everything in the kitchen sink. And that was really cool. I have one complaint about this episode. Okay. It is that they obviously could not get michael b jordan to come back and, and do some voices because like oh, really? th- th- there's a scene where they're running down the hallway they run into killmonger and like it focuses on his face and like you feel like he's gonna say yeah, something quippy something, and threatening yeah. and then he's just popped out of the suit yeah. i like how by the way he's he's got this outfit with the the infinity stones mm-hmm. and they're trying to figure out how to get the outfit off of him <laughs> and Corey's just like fuck you get yeah, out it just teleports the body out of the suit and the suit <laughs> just falls on the floor it's like that's that's pretty clever very very literal yeah like it works so I, I love that that character Kahori. I think yeah. it's, she's fucking I, I great. I really hope the mainline MCU does something with her. I was so first of all the, the throughout this series, what I was like each of these episodes could have been their own event, like uh, MCU film. Yeah. Um, because, like, th- they gloss over a ton of shit. It, it goes at lightning pace in order yeah. to cram it into a half hour. Yeah, but like, you could, like, you can make a full movie. So they've got full arcs and plots and mm-hmm. shit. Um, and I think... Uh, that a lot of these, if they were made into movies, would be better than a lot of the MCU, MCU movies that we've seen. Very possibly. Uh, particularly the Co- the Corey episode. Mm-hmm. I think I would have rather had that as a story, not as a what if, just as a, you know, this as is an what was actual, happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then she finds a way into, you know, uh, present day. Time, time stone. Time. Woo! Yeah. Um, that would have been better than Ant-Man quantum mania that would have been better than um doctor strange and the multiverse of madness like they've kind of they've not they've not put out amazing mcu movies in quite a while which is part of why they're pumping the brakes to try yeah. to figure things out and write right. the ship so give me a kahori movie I'd, yeah. it, it would be really awesome I, I think i would love it the, the only problem is that with the pace of production marvel is at like we're not going to see a kahori movie for like six years if we ever do probably yeah uh anyway that was almost a good segue yes uh vodka says battlefront 2 later yes yes uh in in about 40 minutes um la la hold on this is a person i know every time i i think that might be tyrone actually i can't remember uh says hello there. hello hello there general cano uh, general tyrone i think perhaps anyway uh we're doing great thanks for asking um is okay time for the main event yeah we're okay so okay look 2023 a better year than 2022. Yeah. Which was not really a better year than 2020. 2020 <laughs> to 2022 were really shitty. Mm. Right? 2023. Things have gotten a little better. At least we can go to the movies in 2023. Yeah. Which was the big change last year from all the other years. We couldn't go like from the previous two because mm-hmm. of COVID and, and all yeah. that bullshit. So you and I saw a ton of movies. Yep. Uh, there were fucking streaming series that we saw that were a lot of fun and every every year on our last show of the year we we like to reminisce and think about the things we've seen and, and oh my god we've seen so yes. much shit and so this is our uh the good the bad and the fucking terrible nerd movies in 2023 so uh all right if while you're here make sure you like the video subscribe and comment if we missed any if there's a movie that that we missed we probably just didn't see it i'm sorry mm-hmm. like i didn't care about it <laughs> like this is not an exhaustive list it's not our our guide to every movie ever um so put it in the comments also uh, i'm not i'm not holding you to this but Mm -hmm. i will be giving each thing we talk about an arbitrary rating out of 10 okay if you're in the comments and you have nothing to do with your life do you if you want to like assemble this into a list go right ahead i'm gonna i'm gonna fit it into the three in the title so it's i'm gonna say good 
bad or fucking terrible. Okay. Which is actually really good, okay, and terrible. And another thing about it, but I'm going to say either good, bad, or fucking, okay. fucking terrible. So I also, I just wrote this list as I thought of the things. Mm-hmm. There are no particular order. Okay. Uh, and Rebel Moon is first because we just saw it. <laughs> okay. So Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's um, uh, rejected uh, Star Wars story. Star Wars. Um, came out on Netflix. Uh, people seem to be very excited about it. There's a weird cult following around Zack Snyder that I do not understand. Mm-hmm. I've seen a few Zack Snyder things that I've enjoyed. I've seen some Zack Snyder things I've not enjoyed. Uh, I think the hashtag uh, release the Snyder Cut people are very weird, and I don't understand their religious devotion to Zack Snyder. Uh, That being said, Rebel Moon sucks. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's so bad. And look, we went in, like I told you before we saw it. I I tried to go into this with an open mind. It's like, I'm going to give it a fair shake. It's terrible. It is really bad. it, it, It... you described it best, I think. Zack Snyder just throwing a whole bunch of shit into a pot. Like, here, let's get some Dune. Let's get some Star Wars. Let's get that and this. And it just doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work together. Um, um, it, it also has Zack Snyder's weird fascination with slow motion that ruins, like, all of the action scenes. It, I, I think he thinks that it's like, oh, this is going to ramp up the anticipation mm-hmm. or it's going to ramp up the pacing with some <gasps> moments. But it's you're just like which it can if you use it in sparingly moderation, yeah, right? Yeah. He, he uses it to extend like what would be a two second shot into like fifteen yeah, seconds. Yeah, it's like you, you have like characters sitting around the dinner table. Someone's like pass the pass the mashed potatoes, and you're like okay, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like I don't care about the mashed potatoes. Let's yeah, just fucking the, get on with the it. fucking the exposition. Yeah. Oh my God. Every, every fucking sentence, every sentence in the dialogue was an exposition dump. The characters were, were mostly (laughs) uninteresting. I remember at one point you're like, yeah, we're in the middle of our second exposition flashback. Because he couldn't even fit all of it into one exposition flashback. Um, The, (sighs) the acting was fine. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about the lead role. I'm, I'm sure in other stuff, I, I haven't really looked into her too much. I'm, I'm sure she's a fine actor. It was fine. The, the weird thing about the acting is that they got some strangely big names for this and then didn't use them at all. Yeah, <laughs> and I, we've said we said this a few times. Uh, there were they hinted at stories. In the that, that would have been dumps. way better than the story yeah. we got. Like the the fucking droid dude who laid down his sword when his king died. Yeah. I want to see that fucking the, the, the fucking the Ronin samurai lady I who killed see that 16 movie. fucking Nazis after yes. they killed their kids. Drunk, I want to see that movie. Drunk general dude from Gladiator. Show yeah. me that fucking movie. Absolutely. The, the fucking the, the, the prince who rides the griffin. Like show me show me him losing his kingdom. That's a good fucking show story. Me, show me the moment when he built a religion around not having a on yeah i'll watch that fucking movie anyway this movie fucking sucks the music the music was was boring and uninteresting yeah like the special effects were passable for, for, i mean for them there were some really good moments mm-hmm. most of it was standard fare for your you know 150 million dollar film there were also a few shots that were definitely shot in the volume, in the volume. or something similar they, they to were it just not yeah not yeah. great um this movie fucking bombed at yes. the box office by the way uh the, the i think the rotten tomatoes critical score is something like 22 yeah, percent, and not, honestly not that feels fair so two out two out of time yeah uh fucking terrible mm-hmm. my, my ranking indiana jones and the dial of destiny eh? the, the next and presumably last installment. hopefully last uh why is it last uh because, <laughs> because harrison ford is a billion years old and and, and cannot possibly keep crashing planes and walking <laughs> away from yeah uh, i don't like the, there was a weird thing where like when when disney bought um lucasfilm Mm -hmm. uh they were very focused on star wars they didn't care about anything else really and so like they they didn't really it it took them a while to realize that that lucasfilm made other things This, this is this is the thing though like all the people who are crazy about indiana jones are at the youngest our age mm-hmm and there aren't many people crazy about Indiana Jones that are our age. It's like our parents' age, yeah. right? Um, it, it is a boomer franchise. Right. So, like, already your audience is pretty limited. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but this, and it's not like Star Wars where, like, you can build out the world with... it. It's Indiana it, Jones. It's one, one guy, character. It, yeah. It's one guy and the Nazis, yeah, basically. Every fucking movie, the Nazis, <laughs> right? Which I get it. Like, it's funny yeah. to meet up on Nazis. Um and you just can't you just can't keep doing it right mm-hmm. and it's it, it it wasn't great there were some cool things in it 
um, the, the the faith replacement technology that they have it's is come a very long way. It is kind of insane. Yeah. Um, and some of it looked uncanny valley. Some of it looked indistinguishable. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like the, the, they had some some fun callbacks and cameos, like uh, the 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 one kid from the early movies who they brought back as an adult. You know who I'm talking about? Short rounds, maybe. Short round wasn't in that movie. He was in Loki season two. No, I'm. I'm th- there's some other guy. Whatever. Oh, you're. Yeah. Give him hell, Indiana. Yeah. Jones. Oh, that guy. He's. Uh. Yeah. He's a dude that he. he a friend from a. Okay. A, sure. Um. Last Crusade, I think. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you're. Yeah. But yeah. There was. There was a cameo. There. Mm-hmm. It, it was like a pain by numbers. You know, yeah. and uh, his fucking underage, inappropriate relationship that he had in the original film that like they're fucking mm-hmm. now and they're married and they have, yeah. you know, um, uh, it, it, at the end, they go back in time and see Archimedes and it's just like, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> like, could we have a movie that focused just on this yeah, and not all be, the shit that came right. before? Like, if they would have started the movie like that, I'd have been like, "Holy shit, that's really <laughs> all cool. right." Um, let's let's have a movie with Indy running around ancient Greece. Yeah. That sounds great. This is supposed to be John Williams' last film score. It, it's not going, like he, that. Man is going to be composing well, until he's decomposing. We we uh, I see what you did there. Um, so he it was supposed to be his last film, mm-hmm. uh, and then Spielberg and John Williams went on their press rounds mm-hmm. to to do this movie to talk yeah. about this movie, and they both were like, you know, we were talking the other day, we were going to retire, um, but honestly, what would we do with ourselves? So, so we're uh, going to make another movie. We, yeah, we're we're not we're, we're not retiring. John Williams is like, I'm going to compose for the next ten years, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, I, it, sure. I like your confidence. <laughs> Go for it. Um, so five out of ten. Um, uh, bad. Okay. Out of good, bad, and the fucking terrible, bad. Like if if I was if it, if I still lived in a place with you know linear television, I saw this movie like I was channel surfing on a Sunday afternoon and it came up. I probably wouldn't turn it off. You'd watch the Mads the Mads Mikkelsen part, sure. They're like anything he's in, he's kind of cool. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Oh, God, I love this. I loved it too. I, I love this. Until the stories came out after the release about how Lord and Miller had kind of abused their workers yeah. and then i loved it slightly less yeah it's i um what i loved it was their work on it yes the 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 brilliance and oh the my god this, this, this movie, movie is gorgeous yeah. like the the way not just how great the animation is how, how they blend all the different styles of animation yeah. like how different characters have different animation rules yeah. uh it, it blows my mind how talented the people who work on this it, movie are, and I really wish they got better treatment. Yes, the, the attention to detail in particular is mm-hmm. is amazing. It pissed me off a little bit that they fell into like the common capitalist trope with movies, which is oh, um, we're this is going to be half of a movie. Yeah, that you're going to have to come back and see the other half later. I, on. I did not know that it was part one of two until it got to the very end and said to be continued. Yeah. And I was like, son of a bitch! It's like, okay, could you stop doing this? Yeah, please. Like this is fucking Harry Potter. Like they've done it so many times, and it's just like we get it. You want to make more money? It's they, just they split the Hobbit, a book that is shorter than any of the Lord of the Rings books, into, into three, three films, goddamn yeah. movies. Right. It just it's like, stop doing this. It's, it's bad uh, but uh, th- the only other complaint i can think of for this movie is that like i saw it in a theater where the sound mixing may have been slightly off and it was oftentimes hard to hear dialogue against oh, really? all the music and sound effects that might have been a me problem yeah but like did we see this one together i don't think so okay yeah i think john and i saw it yeah because I, I yeah I, I saw it in the the big screen at the theater near me oh, okay so. yeah all right yeah so i good nine out of ten yeah um ant-man quantum mania Oof. so i was excited for a new mcu movie yeah me too. and the thing that everyone was super excited for was king the conqueror yeah now okay so we got to get the elephant out of the room yes okay Jonathan majors piece of shit giant piece of shit now he's a convicted uh um abuser Mm -hmm. and has been fired from disney yes okay kang uh the version that everyone thought was going to happen isn't happening Mm -hmm. right Uh, unless Unless Disney owns the rights to his digital likeness, <laughs> and then they'll just probably puppet him around like a dead body. I don't want to live in that particular yeah. hellscape. Um, but he's so he's done. He's not going to show yes. up anymore. Jonathan Majors is out. This movie Ugh. wasn't great. Not no. Uh, first but, problem. First problem I had with this movie. 
the entire thing looks like it was filmed in a tiny little green screen room because it was probably yeah <laughs> uh and look michelle pfeiffer one of my one of my favorite actors of all time mm-hmm. I fucking love her yeah i just like i don't care about this <laughs> um it, it, they um uh they brought in uh um bill um Who's the Ghostbusters Murray? Guy? Yeah, uh, Bill Murray, right? Who I was really excited. I was like, "Oh, that would be Bill Murray. What a great idea for MC. Have sure, Bill yeah. Murray just be a weirdo? Mm-hmm. Fucking stupid. Was, and not his fault. They just didn't make a very good use yeah. of the character. Kang had the feel like he was going to be very menacing and crazy. Yeah. And at the end, he had some good moments. Yeah, like for all his other faults, and God knows there are many. Yeah, Jonathan Majors. He's a good fucking actor. Yeah, he's he's a very very talented actor. Um, the uh, the resolution to this film didn't make sense to me. Uh, really, no. it, it looked like Ant Man was going to have to do a sacrifice, but then like something happened. Nope, no sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. And, happy ending. Right. My favorite part of this movie. My name is Darren, and I am not a dick. Oh God, Modok. <laughs> Fa- favorite part of the entire yeah. movie. Uh, and even that, he was. That CG looked weird. It was. I think it was supposed to, I know, and I'm totally okay with. Yeah, it. like just, that is the one bit of weird CG that I I yeah. cannot quibble. We with. saw way too much of his ass cheeks for me to be comfortable with it. <laughs> but my name is Darren, and I am not a dick. Yes. Fucking words of wisdom in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, Guardi- four, four out of ten. Yeah. Uh, fucking terrible. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Pretty good. I like this one, actually. Yeah. Um, and I will tell you, I don't love the other Guardians movies. And the parts of them that I do love are the ones where Chris Pratt isn't in a scene. Because mm-hmm. I'm just kind of tired and over Chris Pratt in general. <laughs> that being said, uh, I've always really enjoyed Rocket. Mm-hmm. This movie was a Rocket story. Yes. Right? It was... He was the main character. 100%. Um, and the, there was it was funny there were some good moments in it that were funny uh it was heartbreaking at times mm-hmm. um i am I anytime am, there was a scene with rocket and his little animal yeah, buddies i am, just rips the yes and, and i'm particularly more sensitive to animal cruelty than i am to human cruelty which mm-hmm. probably says something about my my psyche that probably should be looked at but you show me cute little animals in distress i'm ready to burn buildings down to save them right mm-hmm. um the uh nebula fucking love nebula she's great and any scene she's she's in in this movie was really good um what's his name as um G- gold guy with a cape oh yes um, i know who you're talking about uh a- adam warlock yes uh who by the way we saw in an episode of the bear Mm-hmm. He was a oh, yeah. he was a chef in the bear, mm-hmm. and he is also a really good actor. His his character is really funny, <laughs> and I I really enjoyed him. Um, the, the whole thing. I, I this one I would say good. Yeah, yeah. I'd say eight out of ten. Very yeah. much worth your time. Uh, so this next one I saw, and I don't think you did either. Okay. It fits in the nerd category, uh, but it's called sixty five. I think I saw a preview for this. Is this like Adam Driver's in the past with dinosaurs or something? Yes. What if Kylo Ren did a Jurassic Park? Okay. Pretty much. Um, it, it actually, it's nothing like that. But the premise is that uh, way in the past, uh, 65 million years ago, mm-hmm. um, a human uh, is doing a, he's a space trucker, uh, crashes on a primordial Earth. And sets into motion the events that cause the asteroid that crashes into Earth and kills the dinosaurs. Okay. Not cool. before he fights some dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. While he's trying to save a kid who doesn't speak English. Who okay. he can't communicate with. Sounds very weird. It uh, was a big mistake because the kid can't say anything. And so the whole thing is Adam Driver talking to a kid and uh, running from dinosaurs. Doesn't sound great. It wasn't. Okay. It wasn't great. It, it was. It was. It was kind of boring. It wasn't terrible. I would say bad. Okay. Okay. I, I can't rate it. I hadn't saw it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. This one's gonna hurt my soul. Oh no. The Flash. Ugh. Let me tell you how fucking excited I was for you, you know because I was yeah. talking about it. Non- oh my god, Michael Keaton. Michael I, Keaton. All you were saying for I weeks know. was Michael Keaton. I sat your ass down in my house and made you watch eighty nine Batman mm-hmm. and Batman Returns. Yeah. Because I was so fucking stoked for this movie. 
uh, some obvious things going into it. Ezra Miller's Ezra Miller's entire insanity. legal struggle yeah. and another piece of shit. By the yeah. Way. Um, also, this film's production problems yeah. as well. Like th- this was the one thing that Warner Brothers did not want to let go because it was supposed to reset the DC universe or whatever. Yeah. And um, it didn't. God, it's the the story. They is, would have been better just writing it off for tax purposes. Yes. Uh, and from the sounds of it, maybe we should have had Batgirl instead because it was apparently a good movie. Yeah. Um, God, where do you even start with this? I don't know. Clown uh, show? The first, the first thing is I I, f- I felt really pissed that they um th- they knew that they could get butts and chairs by featuring Michael Keaton's Batman a lot. And Do you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. By the end of it, I was just pissed that we just didn't have a Michael Keaton Batman movie. Because like, I don't give a fuck about the Flash. Mm-hmm. I particularly don't give a fuck about this Flash. Um, and the it, it's a time travel. Th- it's like a Flashpoint, more or less, from the yeah. comics uh, with, with some uh, some pretty. Barry, big I was like, hey, what if I save my mom from dying? Right. And it it ruins everything. Yeah. Uh, the the effects in this movie are fucking wonky. <laughs> They're just so fucking weird. <laughs> the weirdest, the, the fucking Nicolas Cage Superman at the end. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, for that's uh, that's an entirely different moral issue. Yeah. Too. The, the not the Nick Cage thing so much because he's alive and they can get his permission. Yeah, but Christopher Reeves. That wasn't that wasn't B roll from a, a movie he did. That was actual just AI Christopher the, Reeves. They made a new per, like th- that was that that performance didn't exist before. Mm-hmm. That man is dead. Has has been for a while now. Mm-hmm. That's wrong they did the same thing with the uh the other fucking superman the, the guy from like i don't know the 1820s or whatever yeah um george reeves yeah um it's weird fucking um uh what's his name's batman um adam west's batman like i don't oh, yeah. know adam west's name <laughs> uh fucking tr- like t- t- people loved him and he died it, it, and the whole thing with universes crashing into each other it, yeah that like that is insane um the fucking babies falling out of the, the idea being hilarious <laughs> yes like th- that's maybe the one action set piece of this movie that is not terrible yeah I, it made me laugh yeah however the babies look like weird rubber f- fucking toys yeah. um uh, the best part of this movie is michael keaton and yeah. and him as Batman, his introduction in this movie is fucking hilarious. Where he's not wearing shoes <laughs> and he crawls out of a closet, <laughs> and like just a, starts being the shit out of yeah, well, he's like a fucking spider monkey, and just like throws himself, you know, <laughs> yeah. and like that. Like his whole thing was was really good, and it was fun to see him as Batman. But I'm mm-hmm. just now pissed that I didn't get to see more of it. Yep. Um, there was one particularly touching scene with Ezra Miller uh, at, at the end of the movie with his mom. Yes. Uh, where this is one of those moments where you're like, God damn, Ezra Miller, you are a fucking great actor why do you have to be a piece of shit yes for, for all his faults and god knows there are many ezra miller is a pretty good actor yeah um but uh, fucking terrible 1.9 out of 10 please please if you're gonna use michael keaton as batman again just give me a batman beyond movie oh that george clooney thing oh god that, that with was the weird. tooth yeah it felt like uh. a fuck you to the it really <laughs> felt like they were like yeah you don't like this movie fuck you and then at the very have end a the, fucking the, tooth. the fucking jason momoa post credits yeah cameo yeah oh yeah there was a gal gadot uh cameo at the beginning oh yeah and the whole thing is weird like hey d- d- didn't didn't you like the snyder cut let's just get yeah. all those guys yeah jesus christ oh god let's uh, move on the marvels oh i i love this movie i liked it I, um it's i i don't uh, so like the the most criticism i can give this movie is that it is Number one, it is paced to within an inch of its life. Oh, wait. Like, it goes fast. It goes incredibly fast. It's, the movie's like 10 minutes long. There's so many parts where they could have lingered for a few more seconds or a few more minutes, and it would have been fine. Yeah. Criticism number two, I don't even know the villain's name. Like, it, it's not a movie about her. It's about the three main characters and their chemistry and just bouncing off each other. Yeah, and they needed someone to fight. Yes. She has a hammer, if I remember. Something like that, yeah. Uh, she, she's trying to resurrect the Kree mother world or something. I don't know. Or she's trying to destroy her enemies. Or she, or she just hates her motivations change kind of right. Her yeah. motivations change throughout the movie. It's it's kind of weird. Anyway, Florkins. 
Flurkins. Uh, the, to the the, uh, the the cats, yes, yes, to the to the sound of Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, <laughs> cats. cats memory. Yeah. Uh, one of the funniest moments I think in in, in the entire MCU. Yeah. I really fucking loved it. Uh, Sam Jackson was fine. It, 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 I think every actor was was pretty much fantastic. Yeah. Uh, even even the forgettable villain. I yes. like. Um, I, I can't remember. She's married to Tom Hiddleston. Um, I, I think so. Uh, oh, I know she is, but yeah. I, I can't remember what her name is. Um, but like, I wish they had given her a better character because I bet she would have played the fuck out of it. Kamala Khan steals every scene she's in yes she does i i fucking love her and if they don't put her in the mcu uh going forward they're making a huge mistake they are doing they're young, setting up a young avengers yes. thing um, which she's presumably going to be a part right, of which i i think they're setting up in more ways than one uh because uh kate bishop's going to be it she's in the actual scene in the movie yep. um jet klein uh the boy that plays tommy mm-hmm. is tommy the speedster is that Yes. No, 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 yeah, because yeah. Bill, Billy's the... Mm-hmm. Um, Billy's the gay yeah. one. Uh, I was going to say <laughs> telepath, but yeah. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, like, I, I guess he's been, like, bulking up a whole bunch, okay. um, which actually is its own tire creepy weird thing yeah. that they're making teenagers, like, bulk up and, yeah. and shit. Um, and then there are rumors that Joe Locke's character, the 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 boy from Heartstopper, that's going to be in uh, Agatha, whatever the fuck the title is now, because they've changed it four times, yeah. um, is going to be Billy Chaplin, or Billy Billy Kaplan. Okay. So, it, like, they're going to do a Young Avengers thing. Kamala's family are the best yes. supporting actors in the MCU. Yes. And it's, it's like, it's nice to see a superhero that doesn't have a super dysfunctional family. They're yeah. Just, you know. they, they just love her, and they're yeah. worried about her. Um, yeah. The, 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 I, it's... I, phenomenal movie i i hate that it was so poorly received by audiences i hate that nobody went to see it yeah uh 9.1 out of 10 yeah it's good absolutely in the, in the good category secret invasion we're, we're gonna go a little bit into um, yeah a little, a little bit into uh <sighs> streaming series uh i'm a little th- conflicted about this one i i'm not i'm not conflicted at all i didn't like it okay uh i think that uh it was a waste of um sam jackson in general as an actor um the whole thing was very clearly captain marvel uh volume two without captain marvel in it Hmm. Uh, and i don't know why they ended up doing that the the whole thing is weird it's cool they 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 were like they're trying to do the um um super scrolls and everything uh which led to the final fight which was uh, a visual disaster and and looked weird and it's just... I, i'm generally more forgiving of of cgi than you are so yeah. I, I i thought the final fight was fine i just i was like i at one point where i was like i'm watching this because sam jackson's in it mm. that's the reason yeah. i'm watching this and sam jackson's cool but it can't be the only reason you're watching yeah. the show Ben Mendelsohn is good in it too. Yeah, it, it it did some cool things. It was one of relatively few MCU projects that tried to have a message. I think. Um, yeah. Fine. With the whole like xenophobia thing and xenophobia yeah. and, and surveillance yeah. and I mean like five point four yeah. out of ten. I call, I call this bad. It's not fucking terrible. It's just yeah. bad. Uh, Loki season two. Oh man. Okay, so famously, when they when they announced the slate of MCU things, and they're like, mm-hmm. uh, "We're gonna give you a Loki show," I was like, "Okay, okay that's fine. fine." I like Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. Uh, Loki was cool in Avengers. Um, am I like hyper excited about this? Not really. Nah. First season, fucking gangbusters, Absolutely. really good. And I remember thinking, Owen fucking Wilson. Yeah. Well, hold on. <laughs> I, I remember thinking after season one, being like. Uh, the second season is going to suck probably like uh, there's no way they can top right. this um it turns out they did it's better than the first season owen wilson is fucking amazing yes. uh and who knew he had this much range yeah like, i he, didn't he's, he's the goofy guy who From shows up wedding in crashers we, yeah yeah or, or yeah or uh isn't he in zoolander yes yeah, he's he's just that weird guy who shows up in in weird movies and yeah. and it, he's clearly broken his nose six or seven times. yes yeah who knew like he <laughs> like he can play a character with with actual pathos yes w- like an actual i was surprised to see <sighs> um uh the guy who played short round or boris was fantastic yes. uh all of this culminates into a stunning breathtaking events with loki mm-hmm. becoming the god of stories and it was one of those moments where when i saw it i was like Okay, you got me. Like that's... that moment, by the way, gets callback in "What If" yes. season two. Yeah, right. Well, at, at the very end, the, the very end, the, the oh, tree. The, the last episode. Yeah, yeah the um, yeah, the tree of you, you yourself. Um, mm-hmm. 
So the whole thing, there isn't, I, I like, I had like one or two filler episodes, but for the most part, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, really good. I fucking loved it. 8.8. 8. Yeah. Uh, good. So I don't know why we saw this movie together. It's not necessarily a, a nerd movie, okay. but uh, Oppenheimer. Okay. Uh, I guess it is a nerd movie because there's science. Yeah. Um, so you know how, like, you, you got, you're like Zack Snyder bros. Mm-hmm. Right, where they're like, he's uh, got like a me there's Christopher Nolan bros. Yeah, like, okay. W- however, his movies are better. generally pretty good. They're generally better in, yeah. in just general. Uh, did I like Tenet? No, don't fucking understand it. And you know how many fucking, <laughs> you know how many fucking YouTube <laughs> videos I've watched. There's gonna be so many people in the comments saying this is what Tenet is about, and you're not gonna tell me anything I haven't already seen in, in any of the 100 YouTube videos I've watched trying to understand that fucking movie. <laughs> I don't get it. That said, let's talk about Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, this movie is too long. Like, it is a yeah. three-hour movie that feels like it's yeah. three hours long. Uh, I, for me, it, it didn't feel it didn't feel that like, there. He had a way of ratcheting tension. Sure. That really had my attention a lot of the time. Um, and the like the the main event of the movie is the bomb going yes. off, and it's like that's fucking cool. Like the, that was completely practical. They yeah. they didn't explode an actual nuclear bomb because of course they didn't. That would be against <laughs> probably several international. Laws. It would have gotten them shut down real quick. It would have gotten the United States probably put in crime like yes. war crime. Court but or but they they did a real explosion. Yeah. To to simu- to simulate the nuclear bomb, and yep. that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, the characters are I, I I enjoy some of the some of the politics of the science. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was the vi- like the villain, yes. the the antagonist of the film. Mm-hmm. He was really good. Uh, I love the guy that played Albert Einstein. He's not in it much, but mm-hmm. um, I, I like that uh, a lot. Uh, I. I remember there was some controversy because like the book that Christopher Nolan basis on may have played fast and loose with a few facts of Oppenheimer's life. But I I, kinda... I I appreciate that he was willing to sh- make Oppenheimer a human being with flaws yeah. or, or just weird character traits. Mm. Like he was so far to the left of the American mainstream at a time where being that far to the left could get you on multiple government watch yeah, lists. You're a communist. Um, he, he was a womanizer. He had this weird commie girlfriend who he couldn't stop seeing until she eventually killed herself. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of a tragic story on a lot of different fronts. Uh, I, he was also just happened to be smart enough to mastermind the creation of quite possibly the most important invention in the, in human history. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the, 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 that movie walking out of it, just being like, I live in a world where, where at one time, when they were making this, they there were two options. They were going to have a nuclear bomb or they were going to explode all the universe and they didn't know which mm-hmm. one. They could have blown up the world. And that option didn't have a non-zero. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, it's, it's almost nothing. Almost nothing. Yeah. It, that Br- Brad Pitt, by the way. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. There were a ton of ton of names mm-hmm. in this. Um, But just like living it, knowing that I live in a world like that. Mm-hmm. It like I walked out of that movie terrified. It's like that's the like what a f- crazy fucking. Existence. It, it's a deep and exhausting movie. Like I, I don't mean exhausting as in like unpleasant. It just it takes a lot out of you. Yeah, it's it's emotional yes. journey. Yeah. Uh, eight point five. Good, I give it a good. Uh, Barbie. I'm not going to talk a ton about this. In okay, fact, so, I, so I saw this for the first time last night because you told me I had to watch it before oh. I was this. Um, well, I wasn't gonna. I was just gonna. I didn't. I like. I didn't expect you to watch it. I, I would have been. Well, fine I did. If it so yeah. there. Okay. Well, um, aren't you glad you did though? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I love that this was packaged with Oppenheimer as as the Barbenheimer <laughs> yeah. yeah, double header. Yep. Because like, on the one hand, you have this deep, serious biopic about nuclear bombs. Yeah. Yes. This and then you goofy, have Oppenheimer. You have this goofy little musical comedy about margot robbie saving the world from masculinity fucking- <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it's the, the, all of it's good I, um i and i remember thinking i appreciate the mass like uh whenever companies um do the whole social issue thing mm-hmm. you know that they're just doing it for money they don't really yeah. care about and so like that part of it kind of i was like oh that's gross but since i'm here watching it already yeah this is fucking hilarious. Uh, and Kate McKinnon, the the fucked up Barbie, weird is, Barbie, is yeah. probably my favorite part. Yeah, she, mine too. Actually, yeah. uh, just she that 
she's so fucking hilarious for, for like a comedy like a musical comedy that's so lighthearted. like they actually had a pretty good twist in the middle there yeah when it turned out the mom was was the one who summoned right. barbie yes. like like the, and they even set it up like there, there's a sequence where she's like showing what's his name the the guy from downstairs her doodles of like thoughts of death barbie yeah right yeah <laughs> And then she, yeah, then, yeah. And that's when she starts thinking about death in, in Barbie world. Yeah, I, I liked it. I, I thought it was well worth the time. 8.6. Yeah, good. That's uh, about Oppenheimer. I think so. Anyway. Bad Batch season two. One of our couple Star Wars entries. Yeah, it was fine. Um, I liked it, I think, better than the first season. Probably. Yeah. Uh, it, it, spoiler alert, ended with uh, a fan favorite death mm-hmm. tech, uh, who I don't think is actually dead. Um, but, uh, the, but, but fucking... The, the internet's favorite nerdy boyfriend that everyone wants to fuck and i don't get it <laughs> it's the hairline man i i don't get it but i do love like i love the character yeah. right and i love that he's a neurodivergent character mm-hmm. wanda sykes is in the show and yeah. she's she's good um the, presumably we're getting a season three but we are hopefully it's, it's confirmed yeah. for next year um so who, that's probably the final it season. will be the it yeah. will be the final yeah so uh yeah i like it um ahsoka 6.7 yeah. well, 6.7 for bad batch yeah ahsoka is like a nine something uh th- this was the the big streaming attraction for star wars this year yep um uh then the next entry um uh this movie there this this show was surprisingly good for me really and the uh the I liked it for different reasons than everyone else liked it because they put down a lot of fan service with Anakin Skywalker yeah. and I liked that stuff. Yeah, it was fun. Like I was like, that's fucking Anakin Skywalker. Look at how yeah. fucking young he looks. Um, <laughs> Ali Christensen, in, man, he sounds Canadian. They're in, <laughs> they're in the Clone Wars. That's yeah. fucking cool. Oh, there's baby Ahsoka. Yeah, little baby Ahsoka yeah. cutting people in half. Uh, the reason I love this show so much is Thrawn. Yeah. He's a fucking juggernaut. And I love the fact that they had the courage at the end. The good guy won. Bad guy. Or yeah, the bad guy won. The good guys lost. The, the good guys are stranded in, yeah. in a, a galaxy even further away. Thrawn gets home. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and so I was like, hey, guys, yeah. we're kind of fucked. Yo, yeah. uh, do, do you know where Luke Skywalker is? Yes. <laughs> Does anyone have Luke's number? Yeah. Um, and the, I, I think the story is eventually going to lead to Luke Skywalker. I, and I think it I, has I, to. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought it was great. I, I, I give it a good. I, I think Sabine was the highlight of the show for I me. I liked her a lot. Yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like her so much, which is fine. You're allowed to be wrong. Yeah. Uh, 8.8. Yeah. Uh, Mandalorian season three. Hmm. Um, Look, honestly, it, I don't think it's as good as season two. Oh, I don't think it is either. I don't think it's anywhere close to good as season two, and I don't think it's anywhere close to good as season one. Uh, and there were parts of this this show that I liked quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what anyone you can suck my dick at home if if you're a beige. <laughs> Jack Black and fucking Lizzo, uh, Lizzo, fantastic, amazing, yeah. The, like, and you know what? Jack Black has been waiting his entire life to be in Star Wars. And I'm so fucking happy he got to be in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Lloyd was in that episode mm-hmm. as well. Just just a, an entire episode of fantastic cameos. Yes. Um, the story was weak. Um, yeah. It, it just, I, I found myself not really caring about it very much. Um, the the clone thing with Gideon at the end was, was kind of weird. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I didn't love it. They had to set up snoke somehow yeah and yeah, yeah i know I, I get it and is gideon really dead I, who fucking knows i mean it, it's star wars yeah. 7.2 uh i i i'm saying bad okay um the i mean i i, I liked it more than i didn't like it i i tried to like i asked myself it's like are you being so hard on this because it directly followed the season finale of season two where it had one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars. Yeah. And it maybe. Maybe. But it just, I don't know. I just wasn't crazy about it. Um, Star Wars Visions vol- uh, Volume 2. Okay. I-, I actually had to go back and like look at all the episode to, to remember yeah. exactly what happened here. Um, I-, I actually got up my, my top three. Uh, number three, the-, the one about the, it was called In the Stars. It was the one with the two sisters and the polluted water and the Imperial yes. base that they yep. break down at the yep. end. Um, yeah, she's a weird cat person. Yeah, both of them are. Yeah, uh, Star Wars and the weird cat person. Yeah. Number two was Bandits of Golok. That was the Indian one where they were on the train yeah. and, and the little sister goes away at the yes, end. Yes, that one's cool. Uh, number one, Screech's Reach. 
with the the Sith, uh, what's her name at the end? Yeah, yeah. Where, where the Sith good. comes down and takes the the redhead into the sky and says, yes. "Hey, you you killed that weird Sith lady. You're you're my apprentice. Now. You're a Sith now. Yeah, <laughs> congrats. I I loved it for in Visions is one of the most frustrating Star Wars properties because they all have such unique, interesting ideas and these fascinating, awesome art styles, and you only get the one episode of yeah. it. Like. Any one of these could have been expanded into a full series, and I wouldn't yeah. have complained. Well, they did do a novel for the Ronin. Yes. Um, and I think they did might have done a comic book that I haven't checked out yet. But D- Disney, if you have ever listened to anything we have said, do a novel yeah. on Screech's Reach. Listen. Please, I'm begging you. Listen, you son of a bitches at Disney, not everyone else. We are constantly accused of being Star Wars shells. The least you could do is drop in and listen to what the fuck (laughs) we're saying. Just throw us a bone. Yeah. Come on. Uh, For me, it it was, I enjoyed it as much as the first, first volume. I thought it was great. Good. 7.9. Yeah. So this last one you haven't seen, I I watched recently. Okay. It's a a Netflix show called Blue Eyes, Blue Eyed Samurai. Okay. uh, Which I've heard of it. Yeah. The, um, the premise is a a half Japanese, half American uh, girl. Mm-hmm. Grew up in Japan, um, where uh, like white people weren't allowed in Japan, which meant that since she was half white, she was kind of an outcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, trained in sword making uh, and in samurai, mm-hmm. um, grows up and uh, decides she wants to do a Kill Bill. Okay, on the three american men hidden in different parts of japan okay one of she assumes one of which is probably her father uh and so the first season is one of the one of the american guys okay uh and sounds pretty cool it is it is super super cool and she gets a really cool story um there, there's a love interest and there's a fucking there's a guy who she has a chewy who like has mm-hmm. to like you know, she <laughs> saved, yeah she saves him and so he's gonna follow her around and shit um it it's a love letter to the samurai media at large mm-hmm. and it's really cool the animation is stunning the story is really cool the fight scenes are prime they're so okay. fucking good uh so if you sounds cool yeah. can't rate it sorry right uh, i give it a good uh, go check it out if you can um so yeah that's the end of our list and oh my god we have three minutes left <laughs> this is perfect holy shit the list was perfect we aren't late to battlefront yet yeah. um yet let me take one minute um god that's a lot of comments the presenter is curly blonde with privileges, the orange is witty. These are uh, huh? translated comments from Bulgarian. Oh, okay. I don't know what. All right, mean. cool. Thank you for watching. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy says Michelle uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. I assume you mean Catwoman. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah. holy god. Well, by the way, we watched Batman Returns as our Christmas movie on Christmas Eve. Fucking great. Um, I like the part where she knocks out the lights, so it says hell here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jimmy says, you're a loser. Oh, he's replying to someone else. Hmm. Green is losing. Orange is fresher. All right, cool. I'm not wearing green, but Mm -hmm. whatever. I'm really really happy for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Is there anything else on LOL? Hilarious. Thank you. All right. We're going to go play some Battlefront. Join us then. It'll be uh, a ton of fun. It'll be a thing. It might not be fun for you. If you have further thoughts about all the shit we just talked about, bring them to the stream. Come come and say hi and, and we'll talk more about it. Bye. Bye.